Awe, this is the Astro Future Podcast. Today we have Darren Bullock. <laughs> Awe. <laughs> you know what? Let's start with um, let's start with that that discussion about um, like money and what it means to people. Okay. Yeah, if that makes sense. Um, because yeah, so you were saying you were saying to me earlier before uh, before we started, um, kind of like money is you kind of like if you can kind of feed yourself and keep clothes in your back and not just have like mm. the basics like you're good, you know. Yeah, dude. If I'm fed in a bird roof, I'm happy, dude. Like that's that's all you need. Yeah. Um, but like the the one um, I think like people want money for like different reasons. Yeah. You know. Um. But is is it not something that kind of um, bugs you a little bit? You know, um, let's say something like really hectic happened in, in South Africa. Like I don't know, like some kind of. And I'm not saying this is going to happen. I'm just talking about a hot thing. Like yeah. let, let's say it's not even in South Africa. It's like, happened, yeah. you're just in like Jumbo Jumbo Land, whatever. Like yeah. you know, wherever the fuck <laughs> you are, right? Yeah. And like shit goes down. Shit goes down. Yeah. Like, yeah. like everything fucking like the currency hyperinflates. Like mm. everything goes to shit. Um, and that the currency hyperinflates, everything goes to shit. And suddenly um, you're living in a different system. Yeah, and, and like yeah. suddenly it's like fuck everybody, like you need to flee the country and, and whatever. And like, let's say all of your, your assets, like whatever you may have or, or whatever currency you, you're holding, um, is like tethered to the place that you live in. Yeah. Um. And you don't have like you, you like you you don't have nothing, but you you know you got enough like like a Zoom situation where all yeah, of a sudden yeah. and then and then the value changes very quickly. Exactly. Mm. And then like what about like another scenario where you know like the world is like such a globalized place mm. and it's like um you know it's possible to go to so many different parts of the world and so on and so forth. Yeah. So I guess like to me. Um, like I don't really give a shit about material possessions. Like, yeah. Just like material things that like I get utility out of like a nice computer, something like that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'd love, I'd love to, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but like I'm not, I'm not bothered about fucking Louis Vuitton. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, dude, like no travel bags and shit. Dude, yeah. So, but so. Would like, you like to travel though? Yeah. So I, I can agree that, with that. Though I'd like enough money for the freedom to do whatever. Yeah, exactly. Like so that's yeah. freedom and like security. Yeah. That's that's the big thing for me is like I don't want that to That is like the final thing of money that, that actually like I'd say is probably the most valuable part of it. Yeah. Is exactly dude. Yeah. Like just you, you think about it and it's like um it kind of limits your ability to experience things. And like I, I get that um that whole argument of like, uh, you know, like you, you can be content with life and like the happiest people, people yeah. are like happy with what they've got, blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, bro, we've got like one life. That's as much yeah. as we know, like we've got one life. Like, wouldn't yeah. you want to try and secure like a really decent amount of financial freedom as early as possible in your life so that you can. I, I can somewhat agree with that is put in the draft early. Yeah. So it can get done. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't. The thing is, it, it depends, like, what. What are your long term goals or short term goals or what are you working towards? But also like to be like let's say I'm twenty five now, to be financially secure by the time I'm twenty seven or thirty. Mm. I'd be pushing up. <laughs> yeah. Like just to a point where I can move forward and just be comfortable and then yeah. carry on doing the things I need to do. Yeah. But yeah. What what do you define as comfortable? Enough that I can pay for the things I need to pay for, as well as have an opportunity, let's say, to go hiking or go on a trip or mm. go on a, like, so enough to pay for what I need to pay for, and then obviously a little bit of saving. Yeah. So I need a little bit more than I'm making now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess, like, my, my objective with it is to get to a point where I've got enough of a, a stack of wealth. Mm -hmm. that it's earning like a very sizable income on a monthly basis to the extent that I can really decide what I want to do with my time. Yeah. Like, because I feel like if you can achieve that, it's not, it's not so much about like, 
being rich. It's it's just about being able to truly engage with things that make you happy. Yeah. The thing is, like, even, like, let's say, if you want to, like, do the content thing and chill and this and that, Mm. there is still points where money is still helpful to help others and help Mm. with other things as far as the system is. So it is still worth it to make it if you can. Mm. So I would, dude. (laughs) Like, so in this time, I reckon just go, oh, fuck, dude. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And, And you just, like, like my my objective is just like live like live like borderline homeless, bro. Just, like, <laughs> <laughs> just spend money on like nothing. <laughs> yeah. No, um, shit. <laughs> and just stack value. That's yeah. That that's the one thing is to not have to stress. Like yeah. That. Exactly. It's but not. that's that that's the thing, and it's like because if it could be like you know just just to my know, shit fuck like. Yeah. yeah, like you're living on the edge, bro. Like imagine, like I think about that, and it's to think about it is like so nerve wracking, you know, to like get to like the mm. end of a month, and it's like you've got like just enough to kind of feed yourself. Um, but like if something hectic happens in your life, you're kind of fucked. Do you know Pretty what I mean? Much, dude. And like having that that like stack of of security yeah. to know like if something goes down, like I'm good. You know, yeah. like I can handle it generally, unless like I get like serious, like terminal cancer or some yeah. shit. Or your know? family can help you or something like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but it's like, <sighs> but there is hectic situations where all of a yeah. sudden, like let's say your car fucks up, yeah, and you exactly. need a car to get to work, like that doesn't just arrive. Yeah, it's not exactly. a magic trick. <laughs> like when you're living <laughs> that like sort of paycheck to paycheck, yeah, type life, it's like, yeah. You're kind of like a pay, like if, okay, I think, you know, we probably probably both enjoy the privilege of having um, family members that would um, catch us. Yeah. You know, if, like, we, we're not, not going to end up on the street, you know, like, yeah. there'll be somewhere to sleep. In the back of box and yeah. all, <laughs> and couch surf at a home yeah. or something. Dude. But yeah. yeah. But for, like, the vast majority of South Africans, like, that's actually not an option. <laughs> yeah, dude. We have a ridiculous amount of... The thing is, it's weird because, like, wealth distribution is, like, an odd conversation altogether in that poverty level, especially in South Africa because it is so heavy dude. Mm. Especially after COVID as well. Yeah, I mean like <laughs> I- income disparity it, it's actually and I feel like s- since COVID happened like you, you it's it actually visibly been worse. Like yeah. I don't know if you feel like you've noticed that. Dude the thing is like for me I've I've always been looking at this sort of stuff. Yeah. So I've always been like deep in the weird shit, looking at what's going on in the back of the world. So the, like this COVID thing isn't like something that was new mm. in a way of like an event to start looking at something. Mm. So I don't know, like I, I used to see it back in the day all the time. Dude. <laughs> yeah. But also just where, where I was traveling. As no, well. no, like, for sure. Like around us as well, there's a lot of locations and things around us. You yeah. can see it all what, the time. What I'm more getting at is like, yes, it's always been present. Yeah. But it almost feels like worse. Definitely. Do you know what I mean? It's and it's like it, the yeah. disparity is so, like if you think about it, right? Like we've got like domestic workers that will work for like maybe a salary. Like some people employ domestic worker for like three grand a month full time, which is like it's crazy, like ridiculous. <laughs> but the thing is, also you know, people are often foreign or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Where else do you make money? But even if you're from here, people will give you so much to that job. The, the the thing is people will um people will take um they'll take that amount of money because like that's yeah like, definitely like even the on the side of the road for peace jobs they'll do something they'll come to your house for a whole day for 150 bucks yeah dude. which is insane it's because just enough to make enough to eat that yeah. day dude <laughs> like think about that like 150 bucks is like ten dollars yeah ten dollars like you <laughs> <laughs> and also grasp an entire yeah. day for that. Like you, like uh, like you pay that in transaction fees, like <laughs> when you're moving like crypto around. You yeah, know what I mean? <laughs> it's like that's and like then, somebody's day wage, bro. Like yeah, and, and even like crypto. What, as an example. What do you mean? Of like 
a better opportunity to sell like the I I I think so. Yeah. I, I think <laughs> I, I think in a sense that I think for that to to become a thing, you need a smartphone in every person's hand. You need enough internet access for them to use the system. Mm-hmm. Um and I guess like some kind of technical education. Like the knowledge behind yeah, trade like handle. Because like, like what what would you do if like suddenly now global currency became crypto? Like it has somewhat been spoken about before. Yeah, but it, it's going to take a long time mm. for that to happen. You know, I, I think it'll start. It'll start in like gaming, and mm. and more recreational things. I mean, you've got like DeFi and stuff like that. Like, you, there definitely is like. Um, what is DeFi, dude? Um. So it stands for decentralized finance. Yeah. And I've, I've just seen a shit ton of those Brian Rose adverts, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All the time, dude. I don't know that guy is. Brian Rose. London Real. Oh, okay. No, I don't know. Mm. But but DeFi is it's basically like these various decentralized um financial transactions like in a in an eco a decentralized ecosystem like Ethereum or ABAX or Solana or whatever. Okay. You know, so like, uh, let's say an ex- like a decentralized exchange. Is, Are they actually an decentralized though? As well, in like Bitcoin, there's no idea of who the owner is. Yeah, but so, you, 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 you can't, you can't own then? Bitcoin. You, you can't be like the owner of Bitcoin. Mm. Like Bitcoin is an open source decentralized um, crypto. So even the OPEC created it, it wouldn't be necessary even or relevant. Um, no, well, they, they, was an initial sort of set of developers, but because it's open source, like lots of different developers um, will work on Bitcoin, and then it's, it has a governance system where that you, you have to have a certain. I'm not I think it's 100% sure how it works, mm-hmm. um, but you have to have a governance. So there's basically a governance system where, in, like, various stakeholders and 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 I think holders of the currency have to vote on things. Mm-hmm. Um and then like these various developers who work on it. I, I know that there's certain structures for developers getting paid to work on Bitcoin or they have some kind of stakeholding. Um yeah. maybe they own a bunch of Bitcoin. I'm not I'm not hundred percent sure how like developer compensation works, but I know that it exists. I'm sure you get paid um, and, that and, and I know code, like the code yeah. is open source, so you've got like lots of diff- different people building on it. But you've got layer twos being built on it now, um, like Lightning with Lightning Net- Network, which will enable like cheaper transaction fees and faster transactions. Mm. So for NFTs and shit, that'll work. Well, you know, so like Bitcoin. Like, will that solve the processing problem with that, like NFT? Um. Once they start well, upgrading the system, a lot more to be. Well, yeah, I mean the the big problem with so most NFT you've got NFTs in a bunch of different ecosystems. So, but, mm. but the biggest and and sort of core NFT ecosystem is Ethereum. And the problem with Ethereum right now is transaction fees. Mm. So, <laughs> like, let's say, um, and, and at the moment it's really bad because Ethereum's been going on like a crazy run up. And when it's going on a crazy run up, you've got all these people trading shit coins that exist on the Ethereum network as well. So you've got all that demand on the, on the Ethereum network and you've got people trading NFTs. And so, mm. um, the and, 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 and so what happens is people push through higher transaction fees so that their transaction gets prioritized. Well, by, I think. By, by the well, miners. No, no. Well, I mean, uh, to, to mint something as a transaction, to transfer something from one person to another person as a transaction. Yeah. Um, and, and all of those different transactions require validation from, um, miners who are, Kind of all over the world mining the currency. Yeah, yeah. Exactly like yeah. well, in, in the case of Ethereum, yes, there's also ASICs mm. on Ethereum now. An ASIC is a an ASIC is a essentially a, a computer or a, a device built specifically to mine um, a cryptocurrency. So and generally, like a full an ASIC. Processing tank. Yeah, exactly. But, mm. but generally, so with graphics cards, they can generally mine a fairly wide variety of different cryptos. But an ASIC is generally built for one algorithm. Um, oh, okay. So like you, like a Bitcoin ASIC is only gonna um, I think it's called SHA two fifty six or something that's what the algorithm is called um, and and those miners will only be able to mine that specific algorithm and so um, you know, okay. like that that's how they differ whereas with graphics cards um, that they, they'll mine they can mine a variety of but then also I'm sure they'll start taking like the video processes and shit off of that as well they just 
Maybe well, like well, a processing unit or something like that. Well, I'm, I'm not really sure how they work, but I'm pretty sure like they're getting a normal, well, it's, very it's, powerful it's, graphics card can run games and things, but that's unnecessary add-on well, to have well, for running. Yeah, well, yes and no, because different algorithms use different parts of the card. So like, for instance, like Ravenpoint prefers to use the core prop, um, whereas Ethereum eDash, which is the algorithm for Ethereum, prefers to use the naming block. Okay. So, um, does that, or, or, does or, that like not prefers to use, but but is it is a heavier use on the memory clock. Mm. Like I, I don't know how it works. I'm not I'm not a developer or, or somebody who understands specifically how the hardware. I and, never knew that. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, and like a different algorithm will, like some algorithms will make your graphics cards hotter. It's because they use that because like if you're pushing your memory clock more, like your memory doesn't really get as hot. Mm. Um, but if it's more focused on the core clock, um, the core clock tends to get hotter. So the, the cards will probably give off more heat, mining Ravencoin or Conflux over Ethereum. So or, 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 or Ergo. Does it make it more valuable or more complicated in that situation where it's using something that will heavily heat up and get cracked? Something. Well, you, you because then does it become like a rare resource within that digital hardware realm? Well, not digital because it's real, but it's like what like the cards hardware themselves. realm. Like, is there certain things on the card that's worth more that can affect the value of the coins? Then mm, no, not really. It wouldn't have anything to do with that. It's like the the cards. All the cards are doing is they're repeatedly like doing calculations, mm. um, and they have to show that those that they've done those calculations to validate transactions. Okay. Um, and they do the, the based on the algorithm, it will use different parts of the card to do those calculations, and that that's kind of as far as my knowledge goes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> to be honest, like I, I don't go that deep, like technically. That's already like understanding quite a bit more than I've heard from random places because I've never really gone deep into. Yeah. Well, I I, I got I into just, like look at them yeah. a little bit, like NFTs as an example, is like a really nice option for digital artists to make money. Yeah. yeah, completely. Like, it's just the current system that exists is a little bit hectic. Yeah, for sure. I weirdly had a conversation with another dude, Chess, the other day, dude. And he was talking about how much other things use servers and things as well that are probably way worse. Yeah, exactly. That, well, that's like, that, that like narrative. Facebook, Pornhub, yeah. WhatsApp, all of these things. Like, are just, YouTube, all of it. All of these things that people are, are and I think Pornhub is like one of the most usages in the world or something yeah. compared to most of these things. Yeah, well, well, it's but, like so. Those server farms for those things must be fucking crazy. Yeah, they're huge. So they they, like, they do all use electricity. So that that narrative about like mm. <laughs> crypto being bad for the environment, it's like, dude, everything's bad for the environment. Yeah, <laughs> and it's weird. Dude. Like I don't know if it's like I don't know why it's specifically being bullied. I think it's just that it's new enough that people. We'll go for it like a, like I think it's like a plastic store situation. People are always like that with, with like new and innovative technology. Like mm. there's, there's always gonna be some kind of like fucking Backlash. like argument about it. Yeah. And in fact, a huge amount, not all of it for sure, like but a huge amount of cryptocurrency is um is mined on renewable energy. Like, mm. an, like an enormous amount of crypto um uh mining is done on renewable because it's cheaper. Like why the fuck would you want to pay a power producer when you can just have your yeah. own power? <laughs> you know, if if you're a big mining operation, like, and 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 you can create your own renewable energy and just maintain that, then you're good. You know, you. Yeah. Why would you want to pay for? But the option for the, like renewable energy nowadays is also like cost effective. What What do you mean? As in like, when has problems. Yeah, for Solar sure. Solar has problems. All of them with the lithium batteries is a whole nother problem. Yeah, <laughs> completely. So, like, there's always these weird problems that come up with all of these things. Yeah. Like, I've weirdly had conversations with Oak as well about, like, the cost of innovation. So, like, someone like Elon Musk, like, you were, like I don't know if he's to blame, but, like, have you heard about all the space stuff around space that's coming down? And that was that fucking asteroid strike thing the other day. Was that that meteor thing that Greg saw? Mm. Oh, was that space junk? <laughs> space junk, dude. <laughs> so the thing is, like, if someone like Elon is putting up so much things into space to test out what happens, or testing out different levels of propulsion, or all of these different things, like, 
at what point does it start to become a problem? And at what point do we not innovate enough to stagnate ourselves as a civilization? <laughs> yeah, I think like, that's that's an interesting discussion for sure. But I, I don't mm. think it would just I, like Elon's maybe an example of like so one, just one guy. Player, yeah, he's, like, just in, the, he's just done so much of that Starlink shit that he's probably one of the biggest contributors to space jump stuff. He put his name there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't know. I'm not educated enough on the topic. Yeah. Um, but I, would, I, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. I'm sure we've got a whole bunch of shit floating up there that we've shot up dude. there. <laughs> and just a, orbiting there. <laughs> dude, and apparently the problem is, is like little things, like tiny things like this, even if that yeah. thing hits the, another satellite, it'll fuck that thing up because now that's it's going like really, really it's fast. It's hardcore now, yeah. It's like a bullet, basically. Yeah. You just tear through a satellite. Yeah, it's like a, it's a fridge size asteroid came to Earth and hit the Earth. It would cause a massive fucking impact. Yeah. But it's only the size of a fridge, but it's just because of its force. It's just, just the amount of energy behind it is just yeah. so intense. Yeah. But it's very weird with like space to determine what goes on there. <laughs> or yeah. how it's laid out. Because now it's currently free ground. The ocean can just push it into space. Dude. Yeah. It's kind of like the ocean. <laughs> no, but imagine. <laughs> you know, always before. Imagine that ocean there. <laughs> the final frontier of pollution. <laughs> now we need to go and trash space. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> we fucked everything up. Dude, but it's a fuck up, dude. So imagine, like, now we've got an ozone layer. But yeah. imagine that ozone layer with it's like very gangster and it's got knuckle dusters now and it's covered in fucking glass. <laughs> <laughs> all sorts of shit now, dude, because it's got all sorts of metals now. Like, I don't know what that has as like a contributing factor as well to like. I'm not really sure. Planetary defense. I'm not like, let's say, like that fruit child thing comes, but one of those space is- junks hit that thing and then is, it, is that a win? Shouldn't for that space junk? Like, that size <laughs> would like kind of just disintegrate before it hits the ground. Mm. Well, it was probably a lot bigger before it became the food shelf. I suppose, yeah, maybe, maybe that's maybe, what's yeah. left after being... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, there is some trippy size on. I don't know, maybe the world could do with a bit of an asteroid impact, you know? Fuck. Due into that kind of <laughs> nihilistic... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but it's confusing because, like, as many times as I've heard the Thanos argument, it's still somewhat fair or logical to like let's say the earth as a whole. So like I would I would not take part in that. I would yeah. not recommend anyone take part in that. I think it's fucked up. If anyone is, I also think it's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> but like if there was half a population of humans right now on earth, it would do better. Yeah. I think it like, would be very traumatic. Like it like imagine it. Like, that's that's Half the people in the world in the world die, which or like half like I don't know, an asteroid hits one side of the world and just fucks it. Yeah. You know? That's the thing is like But well, you would probably what still have a fallout people? on the rest in the rest of the world. Like I mean yeah. probably like fucking ash clouds and fires. Ash and clouds are hardcore, dude. There's yeah. some impact that can knock us into like a year's worth of darkness. <laughs> yeah, I mean didn't Even that happen, volcanoes dude, can do that. Didn't that happen well they say it, it happened with um, the dinosaurs. Essentially, like when the, like as, like that asteroid came down, mm. like it was literally dark for years. Yeah, it, the sun didn't come out for a long time because everything was just on fire, basically. Yeah, that shit is crazy, though. <laughs> Imagine <laughs> there was like a whole developed society actually, <laughs> as well. Dude, well, I, I don't know. There's weird arguments, dude. Like, but I mean, surely they would we find the artifacts of. of but such but let's say, who built the pyramids? But they find mm-hmm. dinosaur bones. Are they going to assume the dinosaur built it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's like no, millions but of years thing, back. No, but the it's, is like a no, but it's also like assuming knowledge amongst an individual in a way. Like yeah. a T-Rex could have been smart as fuck. Those, those <laughs> long neck things could have been like we're dropping blocks. Boy. <laughs> 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 yeah, but the timeline is like dinosaurs were way before the Egyptians, bro. Well, like like you could carbon date that shit like I mean, way there's, before. Dude, there's this thing called the Inca Stone <coughs> where there's like drawings of dinosaurs with people riding them on stones from like this one mind civilization. But they know they're not like bones or anything like that. They're like full on looking dinosaurs that apparently was only discovered like 
the 80s or something, mm. as an actual, like, this is what the thing looked like, or speculation of what it, like, skin was or whatever. Because mm. now they're apparently saying it's feathers as well, <laughs> on half the things, dude, which is creepy. <laughs> I, think, I think that's possible. But I mean, how would you know? Oh, but, you know, back in the day, they, 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 there's literally these stones of these oaks on fucking, um... Like, we're probably actually really fucking wrong, actually. <laughs> I, I don't think there's any way to prove carbon dating with accuracy or any other, like, form. Like, <laughs> well, I, I, you know what, I wouldn't, I think, you know, people study for a long time to understand how that works, so, again, like, I wouldn't have an opinion about it. Yeah. Then, but I think the better opinion but, but what, 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 I, <laughs> what I do is think, yeah. for sure, though, is we probably are wrong about a lot of stuff. Like, yeah. we probably are still wrong about, maybe we are wrong about, like, the skin of the dinosaurs or whatever. But I'd have to talk to, like, a paleo, is it a paleontologist? I think it's a paleontologist. Yeah. Like, I would have to talk to to somebody like that to understand, okay, how does the carbon dating work? Like, have you found fossilized skin, maybe, that, the thing that is, like, managed to, to survive? The like, thing is, you can say something is a million years, but until we live a million years, we don't actually know how accurate that is. Yeah. That's the confusing part, is that, like, they, they look at certain levels of this one thing, like, it's got lifetimes or something, but I forgot what it's called. Maybe, it, isn't it, like, how it's but made it or... It's, it's, yeah, it's got a certain chasing on it that, um, like, depletes over different lifetimes, mm. and when it's got a certain signature, you can tell that, it's, okay, it's probably from this age or whatever. Mm. But then, like, I don't know, it's confusing. So it's someone like, like, you got, like, a ballpark. Like, literally, <laughs> Gra- like, Graham Hancock, dude, that guy was called crazy his entire life mm. and only now they're finding out that what he was saying is actually quite like accurate about things that happened 13,000 years ago mm. it's just their timelines were broken and he was actually looking for things that built it mm. what was Graham Hancock's like for me on that like there's no like specific way to go into it yeah as in he's got like such a wide array of work and I've also not seen all of it I've only seen like random bits of it, but it's pretty much saying that something happened like 13,000 years ago that like stopped civilization, I believe, or stopped us from doing something like an art age or a flood or something. That kind of killed off a lot of us. Yeah, like the last extinction event sort of a thing. Mm was 13,000 years ago, so it's quite recent. And then that, that's where the... <laughs> Maybe the Christians are after something. Like, who knows our shit? Who knows our shit, dude. <laughs> hey, so th- that's also another weird conversation with all of this. Like, if they find, like, a random bird right now, and they could somehow say this, this is Noah's Ark, does that prove the Bible further? That you find a boat now that's in this thing? <laughs> Dude, I just think that story, like that whole God knows art, it's fucking preposterous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck. I don't like, know. Two of like every animal kind of just pulled up, you know, and like. <laughs> Cheating. <laughs> <laughs> two of like most animals pulled up, like, I mean, the fish were cool, obviously, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, dude, there's a, there's a weird thing I've seen on Joe Rogan actually where they try to explain this sort of a thing. Mm. And they say, like, you know, those. This is actually quite hard, so I don't know if you want to get into this. I don't know, whatever, you know, I'm going to show you. Yeah, oh, God. it's like creation sort of a thing. Say. It's like creation sort of a thing, like, how we could have ended up where we are now. Yeah. But it's like kind of a rough example. <laughs> like, imagine if we, let's say, got advanced enough to be able to see Mars as a civilization. Like, we can't get there, mm-hmm. but we can send things there that can. So it's a human race or something like yeah. that. Yeah. So they say that's pretty much what Adam and Eve might have been. It's like a, like a flagship yeah. sort of a thing. So like they arrived from... Yeah, space. like imagine you so, see like a bunch of pods. So imagine it was just like yeah. species in little test tubes even that, that just got released into the... Like I don't know how the fuck it would work. I, okay, I, I, I get that like going all the way back to... Like almost like who, whoever's seeding it, like is doing it like on like an evolutionary basis. So like an alien, they, 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 yeah. Like they're just yeah. being relatively basic organisms, which they know over like whatever a hundred million years will 
become something. Or become yeah. something. But like, I don't think you could like chalk chalk it up to like. You know, or at least I, I wouldn't, if I had to like have a theory about it, I wouldn't chalk it up to like an alien being seeding a planet. I think it's like a far more like, my assumption would be that it's a far more uh, like natural process, mm. you know? Like I can dig like the whole Big Bang type situation, you know, and then like it was an organism and then over time like, Evolved into another organism and then split out into two organisms and <laughs> yeah, you know over hundreds of millions of years like this shit just slowly kind of yeah from nothing that could emerge just becomes something yeah. like but it, nobody knows the answer to that question but I I can dig with that theory I guess <laughs> yeah <laughs> kind of. the thing is like I don't know the answer to any of that as well but I don't know if it's ever actually I don't know if it's linear I doubt it's linear mm. like. <laughs> Well, like, what, what, what do you, what, what, how would you define it as, like, linear? What, 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 if it's not linear, linear what, 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 is like, point A yeah. to point B. Yeah, but then, like, how, one how would line. you describe it, then, if it, if it wasn't sort of, because, I mean, you could have, like, do you mean, like, point A to point B in, like, terms of, like, something develops, and then it kind of rolls back a bit? Well, like, the Big Bang or, is A, and then yeah. we are B. Okay, so how would you describe like, it, then? What would your, um... I believe it's a lot more complex. Like there yeah. are other realms and like dimensions more, and things involved yeah. in this that we can't see or interact with that can change it around quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, I, I can dig with that. But, and I think in some of those realms and things, time would not exist or even space or something. Like these things could exist in completely other worlds altogether. Just not like in different physical, ways. Like, yeah. Like in ways we don't really even comprehend. Like it doesn't even. Yeah. It even makes sense if you went there. Tough situation. No. <laughs> yeah. You just wander around and be like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Come back and have no idea what to tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like when you like, do some DMT. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. Never done yeah. that, but it sounds crazy. Yeah. Right? I've never done it either. Yeah. I do want to do it though. I really do want to try it. But mm. it's like in the right environment, you know. Well, if you want to do the natural option, back in the day, they used to do a, a seven day in a cave. <laughs> what do you mean? Seven day dark room. That should have fired DMT, dude. <laughs> I feel like DMT is a lot easier. You know? <laughs> just like, one time, just smash like, your pop. Yeah, <laughs> smash your pop. Like, <laughs> like, fucking stay isolated in a dark room for seven days or hit yeah. a pop. I think I'm going to hit a pop. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that's actually like the weird trippy thing with like meditation and stuff like that as well. Yeah. Like, for me personally, I can do some very weird shit while meditating that I could say is possibly like taking shrooms or masculine or something mm -hmm. like that. It could possibly be something like that, like these states that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, to work and get that takes years of sitting there compared yeah, to going to go and take shrooms 100%. or something like that. So like, it's a weird point where now like, I don't do any of that shit anymore. I just not weed. Yeah. I mean, I, I recently got into meditation around mid March. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing it pretty much every day, like for some days here and there. Um, like once twice a day. And like I I would say I'm definitely getting um better at like observing thoughts and not like kind of chasing cars too much, if you get what I mean. Yeah. Um it's like calmed my mind a lot and like helped me like deal with like anxiety and shit. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't say I've gone into like a state that that resembles the state I've been in on on psychedelics mm -hmm. in any way. Like I don't know if that's something that comes with a more intense practice of meditation or or a or a longer. Yeah, I, I guess what I'm doing is relatively simple mm -hmm. practice of meditation. I don't know. Like yeah, I don't know. It's it's very weird because like there's many different ways that I meditate as well. Like, not one specific thing. Mm. Like right now, I can argue that I'm meditating because I'm just chilling, I'm breathing, I'm and you're present, basically. Yeah, yeah. So that's one example. But then there's also another one where I sit there and I do the whole sit there, separate myself, and then I can literally chill to points I feel like I'm floating. Mm. Or and how, how there's long others where I feel like I've left my body or I'm existing here. How long do you or, sit to get to that point? I don't know, like at the beginning I used to sit for quite long. But then that's also like I think a little bit like what you were saying as well, like process. 
mm. I had to learn how to process quite a bit of things before I could start moving around. Mm. So like, there's certain way, like if someone says like, well, be calm, just sit there and like, don't think about anything. Like you don't just suddenly achieve that. Yeah. Don't suddenly achieve that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you got to actually sit there and learn how to navigate yeah. through these things until a certain point that you can learn how to move freely. Yeah, well, like, almost, like, what I've kind of, what I'm, like, really getting, like, getting good at now with it is, is, like, you know, thoughts kind of always exist. Hmm. In your head, I feel like, I feel like telling somebody not to think when they meditate is, like, kind of intuitive because now they're, like, thinking about not thinking and they're, like, trying not to think. But yeah, it's, it's, it's more it's paradoxical. It, it, it's, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like the, the way that I understand it is like your thoughts can exist, but you're just not involved in them. Hmm. Like they're there, but you're just not. You can sit at the river, but you, you don't have to jump in. Exactly. It's it's, yeah. it's like um, so, um, like the, a very common an, um, analogy for it is it's like imagine you're kind of sitting on a lawn chair next to the highway, hmm. and your thoughts are the cars. Yeah. Um, and what we generally do is we kind of like get off the lawn chair and start chasing cars. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, we see like a big red car. And like, and suddenly, know. like, ooh, what's that? Like, oh shit, nah, we'll go chase that car. Oh, fuck, really not that one go fast. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And, like, the whole point with meditation is to kind of sit there and just, like, you can acknowledge mm. the cars are there, but, like, you don't need to chase one or two yeah. or, like, you're just present, you're there, you're, yeah. you're, you're not forcing them away, like, it, you acknowledge their existence. The thing is, okay, you're just, like, you're staying less involved and you're becoming a little bit more observant of yourself, your thoughts and how they make you feel and like how that um, manifests in the rest of you. Yeah. Like physically. You know. Yeah. Well, the thing is like for me, you had like a fucking heavy mental breakdown a couple of years ago. Mm. Like it did heavily affect the way I existed. Mm. Just because I was trying to deal with my own shit in my head. Yeah. Instead of trying to deal with shit outside. Like, <laughs> yeah. So it is like one of those things that can like affect you quite heavily. But the, the weird part is that's also like separate work that I've done. Mm. It's not really meditating. Mm. It's also like digging, lab- labeling demons. Mm. Like literally, you gotta sit there and look. Like, where did this start? How did this yeah. happen? Like, different things that could have caused it, or what's mm. my role in it? Like noting. Like just trying to figure out what's going on, yeah. Yeah. Because the thing is, you can, like, for me personally, I believe I can go to someone to explain these things, but mm. the thing is, like, I know what they are. It's mm. just if I'm willing or not to take the time to look through them, mm. as shit as they may be. Mm. Like, <laughs> I know, but that's also, like, separate to meditation as well. That's just, like, processing. Kind of being present with yourself. Yeah, you know, just like it's it's lightening the bag, dude. Like that mm-hmm. you carry with you. Yeah, it's just finding out what's a heavy rock, what's not, checking out the weight of different things, like mm-hmm. and letting a let go. Yeah, something. like that's that, and that's a huge thing in meditation that I've definitely, mm. you know, like like shit that like irritates you, like makes you angry, and like what what I where it's been like super helpful for me is um is I'm now a little bit more aware. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like sometimes like you may have like somewhat of a reaction to something and you almost, you get so involved in that reaction that like you kind of, it, 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 it runs away with you a little bit. Not like necessarily to, a, to an extreme extent, but more to the way you feel inside. You know what I mean? Like mm. whether it's an insecurity you have or whether you're, you're, it's something that makes you very anxious or whatever. And what meditation, like it's like sitting down and, you know, every day, and, and kind of just being present with yourself and being aware of your body and your mind. Mm. Um, the way it's been good for me is like when I feel that reaction, not always, but a lot of the time I can kind of catch it. You know what I mean? Like you acknowledge it and then you can kind of, in the same practice, like let go. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Well, that's the thing is also once you know what something is, it becomes useful. Yeah. Because you're trying to dig at something, but oh, what did I do wrong? Where, where did this go wrong? Yeah, like, you kind of just think like, it's you just kind of like pre work yourself out into like mm. states that you're experiencing the state before you even experience it, just because you're trying to dig through how to dig. It's, it's very weird to try. Yeah, exactly. You, you, you're trying to think yourself out of your thoughts, kind of thing. Yeah. 
and it just it doesn't really work. <laughs> no. <laughs> like sometimes what you actually need is like just quiet. Like or, yeah. or quiet in the sense that like they like those thoughts could still be there, but like you're just not involved. Yeah. I don't know like if, if that resonates in the same way for you. What like you hit, you hit a certain point of some things and like they like, can't like, not exist anymore, but you can get past them. Yeah, like you, you, you can acknowledge things, but not necessarily get emotionally involved. Yeah. In, in the way that you have stood before. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So that's also like non attachment, really, you know, like to the things around you, to ideas, to context, to memory, to goals, like they were there. I, I, like, I think it's, I think it's yeah. more. It, sh- it's, it can more be interpreted um, as like it's it's an acknowledgement of something, but it, you're not, it's not that you're blocking it out. Mm. It's that you're, you are facing it to the extent that it becomes less scary. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It, oh, it's, it's more in that sense, or like being Once present. you know how to face something, you can. Yeah, exactly. Like, like, think about mm-hmm. like. Like I'm sure, and I think everybody's experienced this, is like things in your life that you kind of like build a certain mindset around or like a certain um, like anxiety around, mm. you know. And then you kind of like get past it. It could be learning to do something. It could be a, a big test. Yeah. It could be like whatever. The various things For me, lives. though, when I was younger, weirdly enough, I was walking around outside in the dark, something alone. Yeah. Just because I had like, Weird paranormal experiences, like in the way that was like that, was like mm. weird to me. Yeah. So I spent like two, three years not walking around alone ever. Yeah. And it was shit. That's but then when I got over it, I was like, what the yeah, fuck exactly. was I doing? And it was literally like, like there was at the time, there, I was but your out. constructed yeah. fear of whatever it, it may be. And like, think about how much of that shit, you know, and, and we, we, we block it out, like, we'll avoid. We'll avoid thinking about it, or, or we'll avoid um, coming into those that, that 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 feeling or facing that challenge or, mm. or thing. Um, and it just kind of makes you think like how much we hold ourselves back. Dude. <laughs> it is crazy. Dude. <laughs> like I'm one that personally challenges myself often, just mm. because I've had to to get out of the shit I was in. Yeah. So I've, I've learned somehow how to backdoor myself into doing things. Yeah. By just this belief that I can do it. Because I've been through such weird shit, like, why not? I've seen what today is and what tomorrow could be. Like, it's just now I'm experiencing today. I don't know what tomorrow is yet. <laughs> like, but it could be anything. Like, I could hate today, but tomorrow could be different. Yeah. And having that awareness is, I think, like super powerful. Mm. You know, because like I, ha- I, I have days like where I'm like, it's just not a good day. Like I get out of bed, and like I just kind of know it's not going to be a solid day. You mm. know, like my my head's not 100 percent right. Like I'm just feeling a little bit just Feeling, I don't know if you get that sometimes. Mm. Like when you get days and you're just like, you're not as I don't know. You're just not as like present or whatever. Yeah, you're not um, missing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it does happen sometimes, dude. Yeah. Like, I was actually going somewhere with that. No. Oh, sorry, dude. I no, 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 no. I, before you started talking, it was gone. <laughs> 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 Anyways, yeah. Yeah, but shit, dude. Like, even with some of the shit, like, the one thing I've seen as well is, like, as a tracking thing, like, if something happens to me, I'm also like, okay, how long will it take to deal with it? Mm. So I look at it and I'm like, fuck, this feels like it's going to be like a day. Or a month or a year, like it's a deadly, it's a dumb out there a year. Mm. But for anything that I've actually been able to come up with a number on, I've been able to get over. Mm. Just because I knew that I would get over it at some point. It's not, as soon as I realized I can get over it, mm. like it, it almost gets easier to deal with because it's like, okay, cool, yeah. like this is. It's going to happen eventually. Yeah. I've just got to fucking like, just gotta well, power through. Like, yeah. it, like it, it is what it is. And kind of knowing that that, or, or having that faith in yourself or faith in the situation that, that um, it's going to get better is like, I think what drives all of us in a big way. You know? yeah. like, or, or, and it doesn't even necessarily need to be brought, 
is in such a negative sense, it could be even down to like a goal that you're chasing or whatever. Yeah. Like being present, like in, in that present moment and like understanding the process and not being so anxious about the end, you know, yeah. <laughs> or later or yeah. previously, you know. Well, it's weird because painting pictures is dangerous. Yeah. Of the past, the present, the future, anything. Once you see something as a set thing, you can kind of manifest it, things in a sense. It becomes well, right? that thing instead yeah. of this wider range of experiences mm. that happens or something. You start to conglomerate something, or like, even you say with gold. Yeah. It starts to become like confusing. Or I, I, like, people yeah, start I get going that, too so hard much. into things. Like, like, I'm one of those people that's way like, too like, hard. If you try like, too hard, like, like it's yeah. always better if you're driven by like a, a love for something or, or, or what, whatever it may be, and like you're not trying too hard to acquire like the end goal mm. or like glory at the at the end, but more involved in the process. Yeah, that's um, the thing is I work very hard, mm. but I'm not actually. I don't have anything specifically to aim for, like one set thing. I just treat it all as well, but it's weird, like because on the other end of like memories and things, when when things are like that, it's more like it affects me. But in the future, when I rather conglomerate everything into one, I'm like, oh wait, that makes sense. Mm. I can move towards that. Just say that again. Like in the when when I think of things in the past, let's say. Yeah. Um. There's experiences where certain things happen and I start to bunch them together. And yeah. it's normally sometimes quite bad. But yeah. then for some reason with like there can be good ones obviously with memories yeah. if I if I say remember yeah. going to but this job. Like or Opi Copy, like there's a there's a construct of Opi, but it is yeah. five times of Opi that's yeah. one thing. It's, it's like a, a constructed narrative like in your brain. Like yeah. I, I, I get that completely. But then in the yeah. future it's weird because useful to separate all these separate parts into one part mm. and just aim towards that one part that's completely mm. irrelevant like, to all of it. But not irrelevant, just like it doesn't require the others. Yeah. They're just things that you do. <laughs> and well I guess that's the process of like learning, you know, like you mm. I, I think I think that's the other thing, like something that I've kind of realized and I, I actually often end up realizing it again and again where you know, where you're trying, there's something that that you're you're trying to do or get good at or, or whatever it may be, and you almost like you're almost consciously trying to be conscious of how you're better at it. Mm. But then, like after you have kind of been like banging at it for like a good while, like you start to realize how naturally things are coming to you. Like you almost, yeah. it's like you're not necessarily aware, like trying to be too aware of how much you have learned in like X space of time or, or whatever. Um, is is almost kind of productive. Like you're trying to Expand too hard to know to, to, to like think that you know you how to do know, something. You don't like, want to work up a whole hard you just kind of keep you sort of flowing into yeah. what you're doing and 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 like you know whatever it may be, learning you know learning a new skill or mm. like uh, you know like I often like get a certain point down the line and I'm like oh wow. <laughs> Like a lot of the stuff is just kind of well, dude. Even this podcast we're doing now, dude. This mm-hmm. is now this is the sixteenth episode, dude. And the thing is, it felt like I started literally last week. Dude. Mm-hmm. Like it's weird how time. Like as long as you do that first thing, mm-hmm. it will eventually exactly. become something. Yeah, you you just like, it's like step one. Like like the the biggest issue. It kind of relates back to like that same concept we're talking about. Like it's people's biggest thing. And and all of us, I mean, for myself included, um, like taking that first step just to start with something, mm. you know, because you're like, oh, and then I need to do all of this, like, yeah. you know. But actually, all you need to do is just start with step one, because that's kind of going to lead you to step two. Yeah. Like, understand that step one is not going to take you to step ten. Like, yeah, no. you, I mean, it's you have to go like, one yeah. thing exactly, you know. And and the only way you're going to do that is by like banging your head and learning. The weird part you know? is like. All of this is actually a weird conglomeration of skills. Like, mm. I just love talking shit. <laughs> <laughs> I happen to do the photography thing, and yeah. also I have the light and I have the camera, so mm. I've got the thing. And it's just, it was a good option to do. Yeah. So I was like, fuck yeah. 
But, but the thing is, I didn't actually learn how to do this anymore. Anyway. This I'm learning how to do it while I'm doing it. Like how, yeah, exactly. Like learning how to talk and to that's people the best again way to, is weird. To learn, like, to be honest. Yeah. It but is it's very way. chill surprising to do. Yeah. Like I'm still yet to completely fuck out and take, but I'm sure the day will come. But, <laughs> but like saying where you just have nothing to talk about. Yeah, right? just, just <laughs> blank into the distance and be like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> It's crazy, dude, but it's weird how things over time work out completely differently. Like, yeah. art for me has been one of those. Yeah. I started exploring art only after school. Yeah. Really, I never did it before. Oh, really? Yeah. That's interesting. I studied civil engineering for a year and I hated it so much I started doodling. <laughs> <laughs> and from there I, I started aiming for yeah. towards this. Dude. But that's the thing, is also that just that one memory of thinking, exactly. let me doodle a little bit in some books. Yeah. And then let me make a portfolio for Colin. Yeah. Let me. You know, can be and now, so now I sit here and it's like, fuck, it's been quite a while. Exactly. Now yeah. you're kind of like actually. And it, and it put my life in a completely different direction. Like yeah. I was going to go do building and shit, dude. Yeah. Like. <laughs> you wouldn't have been happy doing that. No. I, I could have been. I don't know. You think so? Yeah. I don't know, dude. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm glad with the. I'm, I'm a firm believer in like absolutely not settling. Mm. Like in terms of what you do, like to to make money and or just like what you choose to occupy the most of your time with. Yeah. Because like I know like for me like if I'm doing something I don't want to do like I'm gonna be bad at it. Yeah. I'm not gonna want to do it. Like <laughs> I, I won't put in the I won't put in the time. Like I won't be focused. I, I. But the thing is, there's all things that we don't want to do that we have to do. Like general graft is like that. Yeah, yes and no, <laughs> like for sure, for yeah. sure. Like there's always, I think there's always going to be elements, but I think that at like to the like largest extent we possibly can, we need to double down on the things that make us fucking giddy really excited, like that make yeah. us, you, you know, like like for me as an example, like it started with like the crypto mine, which was kind of like the step one, yeah, you know, and it kind of like just fucking snowballed into like this 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 crazy um thing but like i've been i've had the energy to like every day sit until like late hours of the morning for months learning about all of this and, and it's been very profitable um yeah you know but if i was let's say like i don't know you gave me like a bunch of like microsoft excel courses to do like okay, you need to allocate that same amount of time you allocated to the crypto to that. Like I could never do it. Like I couldn't. Yeah. Like or, or, like you would have to really be like pushing me yeah. something. Like something really like maybe if you're like I'll give you a million dollars if you do it, then I'd be like okay. Yeah. <laughs> like that gives me enough fire to do it. Do you know what I mean? But that's the weird part. But, but, but you I'm find still, your own. I'm job. still not gonna enjoy myself. Yeah. But there's 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 a carrot at the end. But I think what. Where, where, where we truly ex- are going to excel is where it's not so much about the carrot at the end, it's about the bite of the carrot that you get with each step of going through the process of what you're doing. Do you know what I mean? Like it's 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 How close it's, are you it's, getting, it's uh, rewarding. How much are you getting? It? Okay. Rewarding every instead like, of going through the whole carrot, you love know, the next you, little piece. You, 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 you not, not so much like you love the process. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? The like, process is like, fun, though. Like, like, like you, you, you love the work. Or you, you, the time you're putting in doesn't feel like you're forcing yourself to do it. Like, working hard and pushing yourself mm-hmm. late hours, like, sometimes even when you're doing something you love, like, you mm-hmm. do it, you've got to push yourself. Well, but, even like, as but, as but your motivation towards it, it's, it's so much yeah. easier to draw that motivation out of yourself because you love it. Even you know an example I mean? of that is, like, Carl now and Zane would do Exactly. How much of that dude learned just from fucking doubling down and going hard as fuck, dude? Exactly. This shit is crazy, dude. Exactly. And that's that's like, the thing is like yeah. if you if you become obsessed with something, you can do well with it, like whatever it is. But that obsession is not something you can force. Mm. That's that's a big thing I've learned. Like at least with myself, is like I cannot force myself to be good at yeah. something if I don't if it doesn't interest me. Yeah. That's fair. That's the thing is like if you're not applying yourself completely, like here's me, here's the thing, let's go. Mm. It's more like I'll check it out from this side, maybe there isn't. <laughs> like mm. it's a different 
experience of that thing. It won't actually be the thing until yeah. you actually look at the whole thing in the entire yeah, exactly. time. It, it almost needs to, like, most, like, at least more than 50% of the time, you need your work, I feel, needs to feel like play. Mm. Or, or very close to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, that's honestly where, where, for me, I've found, like, the most success in my life is when I've had, like, that crazy obsession and love for something. Mm. And things that I haven't been crazy obsessed with or loved, I've, I've, I have, and perhaps tried to force myself to do, I genuinely haven't really had great results with. Yeah. You know? The thing is, it's weird because, like, for me, doing the art thing, dude, like, I discovered afterwards, only after pushing within that space, but mm. if I never tried to look at it, Mm. And I just ignored it. But it, like it's weird it because started with a, with that a was state of play, right? Weirdly enough, yeah, it was sort of playful. Well, yeah. actually, I was fucking up at college. Yeah. And I started drawing. <laughs> and I got so bored, I started just not drawing. Like, yeah. Not doing work and drawing. Just drawing, yeah. And then, like, the teacher there was one of the guys that even told me, like, hey, you can make art too. And then, like, also those people in that room, mm. like Adrian, Kevin, all of those oaks that I actually like grew up with at that time yeah. were also contributing factors. Like they were driving for me there. Yeah. They're like, dude, fucking do this, dude, fucking do this. And then yeah. I was like, I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> yeah. So it's weird how that also contributes. For sure, it definitely does. It definitely because does. like as much as it is like now, now that I've gotten older, I've learned how to drive myself. Because mm-hmm. when I was younger, I didn't have the same mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. yeah. I think I think different, especially when you're younger. And I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with that. Like some people perhaps want to chase. I mean, I know, like straight out of school, I was like I was working and like chasing like a passion. But I think like in in our younger years, like it's really fine to kind of just enjoy that time and not be too <laughs> concerned over like. Mm. you know what's happening immediately right now i think like you can give yourself a certain amount of time like almost like the level of seriousness changes all the get exactly like societal and pressures in a way and like as you Mm. get as you get older and it does get more serious you're like "Ah," you know like like you allowing yourself to have that time with less responsibility and less seriousness is actually really precious Mm. and it's i think it's something like when we're younger we don't at least i didn't um, didn't acknowledge as much, mm. you know, and now life is like much more serious. Like, there's way yeah. more people who depend on me, and like, there's way much, way more shit to deal with. Yeah, there's a lot it was going on at the time. So yeah. much more simplistic. But in, in that state of mind, at that time, and I feel like for a lot, like a lot of young people feel this is like they want to like grow up and be established mm. as quickly as possible. But there's actually a beauty in not being there yet. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Definitely, dude. Like, it's, it's just, it's less stressful. <laughs> it's more The simplistic, thing is, you know? <laughs> it's useful to gain skills before you are put to the test of using them. Mm. <laughs> 100%. Like, a, like, let's say you have a job, now you've got to go perform at that job. You can go learn how to do that, but can you perform? Yeah. Well, like, like, I, I think that element of doing and, like, us talking about that, mm. that topic of, like, step one, just doing mm. shit even if you're not good at it. Yeah. Um... Yeah. No, it's useful. It's just to learn. It's not give yourself a chance to believe that you can do it. Because a yeah. lot of people are somewhat insecure about some ideas. Yeah. Like, like they, they want like to try younger, to pursue it because it's just... Like when I was younger, I told my friends, hey, I want to help in the world. Mm. They were like, like, that's not that easy. Like, you're aware of what you're saying. Yeah. It's possible. Yeah. I understand it, but they, they might not. But the thing is, like, other people will judge a certain idea differently because they don't understand it themselves. Mm. For sure. Like, the, weirdly enough, the best advice I've ever gotten was from Paul. Mm. I don't know if you ever knew Paul Sunday in Colada. Mm-hmm. Yeah, did you add fucking Greenstone one day at the park? And he's just looking and he's like, you see this, there's, there's a line. And you put this is BMX now, you're gonna go do a trick on a on a half pipe now and you're gonna go do some shit. So it's like okay, you gotta see the line and then 
Only you can see it and understand it and know how you're going to do it. So this is him that's going to go on the bike, do the trick now, mm. go down and land. But then also, from there, he's like, and then he goes. Mm. And then you see him land that shit. He goes, he does a fucking massive turn down. Mm. Fucking, like, and he's just like, how the fuck? Like, <laughs> like, the thing is, like, there's a level of seeing it and then also executing it. That are two very different things altogether. Yeah. Is now, do you have the ability now to actually do the thing that you're thinking about? Yeah. Well, you you kind of just got to do it and fail. Yeah. You know? Fail a lot. And, 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 and those are like buffed on the floor all the time. And, 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 and <laughs> kind of simplifying it down to DNS and like everybody's like got a different body weight. Everybody's got like a slightly different bike. Like everybody, so like your line, although yeah. it will be similar, can be similar to other lines, is kind of unique. Yeah. To you, so like you could fill it. I guess you could no, philosoph- like even philosophically relate that to like life in general. Is like not like everybody can understand your line. Yeah, no, definitely, dude. You know, it's it's crazy, dude. Like that's why I say it's weirdly the best advice I've ever gotten. Yeah. Dude. It's crazy, like just to see a direct example of something being. Yeah. Said and then executed. Like displayed or, or like it's or, a perfect display of a concept. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like very rarely does that happen. You know, someone actually sits there and gives you something and you're like, holy fuck, thanks. Dude. <laughs> 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 yeah, <dude. laughs> yeah well, it's nice to when that happens. But it's rare though. It's not every day. There yeah. is some days that you learn something new, but then uh, those are some things that are just like random points. You're like, holy shit. <laughs> That was a lot at once. Like, like an epiphany. Like a sudden boost, dude. Yeah. But I feel like there's precursors to that. Like, you have to experience mm. a bunch of things and then something clicks. But you, like, you, it, it wouldn't have clicked unless you had, like, a, like, a process that led to that click. Yeah. You know? That's, a, that's the weirdest thing is a lot of the times I've, I've had the click, it's more context. Like, mm. I can contextually understand why these things happen mm. but and only after they've happened when you're in them you don't know yeah exactly like you to kind of connect the dots you need the dots to occur yeah you don't know what the dots are yet <laughs> yeah or else you're just fucking drawing scribbles on a map dude <laughs> so yeah. it's, it's confusing how like if it's time time in distance of of growing up as well how much it contributes to it and all the difference there's so many different forces to all of these things. Yeah, it's just like a giant uncoordinated mess that creates order from chaos, bro. Yeah, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, that's kind of all of existence, I suppose. Like it's yeah. like um, like everything is kind of just trying to find equilibrium, but it's all kind of like bashing into each other. So like it, it just never. Yeah, at that, the moment, like life and existence, hectic, yeah. and, and, like it's just everything, like a bunch of shit, just trying to find equilibrium, but it, it never will because it's always kind of bashing around with itself. The the weird that part is, is <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> but the weird part of that sort of thing is it's confusing because, like let's say, a battery, it has a positive and negative side. So there's the two sides. Yeah. But when it's balanced. It pretty much exists as a being of a battery. It's no longer a positive or negative battery. It's just a battery. Yeah. So, but the thing is, that thing still needs to be charged. It yeah. still needs energy. Or yeah. So there, there always needs to be a trade of energy in a way. Mm. Like I don't think anything can ever stagnate. Yeah. Like even particles that are fucking tiny, 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 like Higgs level, is still active too. Yeah. So. I don't think anything is actually good to go. No. Shit goes, dude. <laughs> Just like a giant jumble of chain reactions. A little bit, even, yeah. But not going in a straight line, per se. No, I don't even think there is a way to map that, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is confusing. But uh, it's also, the randomness also makes it fun. Yeah. Like the randomness of experience of anything could happen makes it interesting. 
Yeah, I mean, knowing what would happen from moment to moment, every moment must be kind of worrying. Yeah, like that, that's that's the Raven shit. Dude. Imagine just seeing the future all the time, and you just arrive in it, and you're like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in I think in certain situations that would be mm. great, but in others it would it wouldn't be like. Yeah. And it's the problem. There's the 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 now sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. There's always going to be some kind of trade off. Yeah. Somewhere. Yeah, man. Yeah, but all in all, I know, like, I see being is quite a beautiful thing. Like existing. Being, yeah. Just, Just kind of. As it is, yeah. Like things in being, I've seen. <laughs> all. It's just great that it exists, you know. Yeah. It's good to exist right now. Yeah. Just be out there. Existing so hard right now. <laughs> 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 oh god, I can see you eat this. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. No, it's quite fun in the world, dude. But like, as far as for you with music, where was it music as a as a concept that inspired you, or was it what to get into the music industry? Yeah, or was it just the, the work of it? Um, like, how did that actually unfold? Like, it's evolved a lot over time, you know. That's that's also a lesson I've learned is like, you don't just like decide your destiny and like, you know, because I think initially I was like maybe a bit too deterministic about the direction um, I was going, you know. Um, but yeah, it started with like just some house parties and I, like I really liked the I liked you no know, I liked curating the lineup and I and, and I really like to see people having a good time and mm. and I like to make money. Yeah, it like those house parties were what those ever. Yeah, like I never did and ever and intensity and like yeah. things like that. Like that was very um uh, yeah, I don't know, like, I, I really enjoyed that, and then kind of one thing led to the next, and then, um, initially with, like, more of an eventing, like, music and events direction, that's kind of where I started, and then over time, it kind of evolved into, um, uh, more artist management and, mm. and stuff like that, but, yeah, I, I, I think, um, I mean, I, I've always loved music. I don't play music, but um, bah, bah, that, 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 the, <laughs> the feeling of kind of creating something like that and bringing people together and getting them all to experience an experience like that together is really yeah. like what feeds my soul. Yeah. Um, like it's, that, 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 that's what kind of drives me towards it. Oh, wait. Um, I must say lately it's been more difficult to stay as like passionately driven in that space. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say I'm not, but I still am. I still am passionately doing that space, but like it's, it, it definitely fashion. doesn't resemble, um, quite resemble like what it was to me before, if, yeah. you, if, if you get what I mean. You know, especially with COVID and all that kind of thing, it's, it's made it's it. changed it around quite mm -hmm. a bit, yeah. Yeah, so the world is a little bit different. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it, it's still something I love and like working with. You know, working in a space like music, it, it can be a lot of like politics and clickiness and bullshit. The, the weirdest like thing though for me was weird enough with you in one of the first time I went to Gucci thing. Mm. Is that was that that one uh Bonobo dude. Yeah. When you were talking to Mark there, dude. Yeah. And I was like, holy fuck. That's the guy, dude. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, holy fuck, dude. Because I love Pierre Church. Yeah. Always, dude. Oh, yeah. Like, dude. <laughs> it, it, uh, was, it, it was... Dude, to, to and like, that was the first yeah. time I've ever seen someone and I've been like, I don't even know how to get talk to this guy, dude. Yeah. What the fuck's going on? <laughs> but then the thing is, like, from you, you probably just know him as a guy. Like, he's never actually... Yeah. Like, like, yeah. But, like, it's weird just because I've you know always like, seen him as this great artist that I idolized something. W when him. I first met him, there was definitely... A bit of that, like I couldn't put my fanboy in the way, like yeah. with that, you know, I was like, oh, yeah, it's that, you know, like <laughs> because, because it was such, me. also such like yeah. defining music, like in my younger years, you mm. know, like that whole like angsty, like fuck the man, like 
Dude. I'm not scared of God, like <laughs> religion bullshit. And like, it really resonated with my like angsty, angry teenage self. Yeah. Know? Um, no, and and, even, and even still, it was just quality, quality music. It was such a vibe mm. at the festival. Like some of like the best live music experiences watching PH Fan. But then over time, like yeah, mm. like that kind of fades off. You know, like mm. and but also like, style too. Be, be, yeah, be, because you you just you just get to know people in the space as people. Like and, yeah, and they are just people. Like it's not. Um, that is, but but we definitely and I did as well when I first started up. Like I definitely like constructed that in my head like mm. you know like this person is like because they've, they've kind of had an emotional like effect on like they've had an effect on your life with the art that they've created yeah you know and so it's difficult to maybe initially it can be difficult to kind of see them as them yeah dude. and not like the brand and and uh and and art that you so kind of dearly hold to your person yeah in a sense so that's a, the weird thing as well is I've learned to like also just accepting them in the form of an artist as well. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Not exactly. only the like present the, like, form as well. Really. Like, like like a, some some like people are laughing at what this form. Yeah. Like, a, it's, it's yeah. weird, dude. Because like, like, sometimes you might be disappointed. Like, even in college, <laughs> I noticed that. Not, not really that. It's just some people I didn't really have to get to know because then in the artistic form, you express so much already. Yeah. Like, it's, it's confusing. Like, <laughs> There's no real way to explain how those things work, I don't think. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's just very random, and every once in a while, someone's just like, oh, you should do that, or oh, this, or oh, this is very different from this thing. Yeah. Because literally, PH Fat was like that at the beginning, dude. I was listening to the radio once, yeah. and I heard the machine, dude. Yeah. But I didn't know it was that song. I looked around for a week and a half. Yeah. I literally sent messages to radio stations <laughs> asking them, like, what is this what song? What the fuck is this? <laughs> and Oaks are like, sent me all sorts of shit because back then you know, there wasn't like this Spotify or yeah. fucking Shazam. You can't just Shazam the song and be like, oh. Yeah, exactly. It was it. different. I mean, the they, they gave them the their first music. albums out on SoundCloud. Yeah. yeah. So, so I couldn't just Shazam it, dude. <laughs> so I was sitting there like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. And then once I heard it again at the festival, I was like, there's no fucking way. Yeah. I remember like, <laughs> Stephen no Paul's. fucking way. <laughs> Stephen Fold showed me um, PH Fat when I was, I was like 16 years old mm -hmm. at the time. Um, and he had found out about them because he went to boarding school in Cape Town. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, Mike kind of like Mike and, and, and March and still mm -hmm. Disco at the time. I um, fucking love Nash's music as well. Yeah. Like, even as a solo artist. Yeah, oh, dude. Oh, dude. Nash makes bangers, dude. Yeah. <laughs> like, I. <laughs> The level of like love and passion I have for PH Fat is like immeasurable. Like I can't if if I like if you if you gave me like like a few million dollars, like one of the first things I would do is like call Mike and be like, okay, yeah, yeah. like fuck COVID, whatever. We've got money. Like <laughs> let's go to Europe and let's do this now. Like, yeah. Let's do it. Fuck it. Like we'll like let's just do it. You know because yeah. because that's truly. That's like something that like really feeds feeds me. Like that that that's like that's like a passion I would like. It it, it with COVID and everything was was a difficult thing to face. Like, that, like especially shit. because like interaction with people played such a huge role in your life. Yeah, dude. compared to me, like who, who would go chill at pools every once yeah. in a while or something. But for you, interaction was so nice. Or part mean, of your life. It, 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 it was it was part of my. Look, I can be very introverted, um, yeah. but it, it that it, it was a like it, it was kind of a like a defining part of like my person because I pretty much dedicated like all of my adult existence to this space, <laughs> you yeah. know, like like obsessively, um, and then to kind of get to this point with COVID, like we've definitely found ways to like make it work and whatnot, but it's it, it doesn't resemble anything like the momentum that that existed. Pre-COVID, you know, yeah. um, and yeah, it's you can definitely feel a bit despondent and demotivated yeah. at points because you're just there's, like, what the fuck am I like? Like nobody. There's lots of weird options though dude, that have come up that are very much definitely like, it's evolved. Like, 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 there's been lots of new opportunities. Like think about like the fitness. Did you also see the fitness dude that uh, Donny Basco thing did for Carl? Yeah, what about it? That um, stream. when they did the, the stream, dude, with all the different backgrounds with um, Mags. 
been yeah. playing. Yeah, yeah, I've seen, they've been doing that for ages. Yeah. Dude, but like that, that quality of that one was fucking crazy. Was it the last one, dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's called the Pulled or something like that. Uh, I'll check it out and just put it somewhere, dude. But also, like, fucking such a sick option. So they, they made um in Unreal Engine, like, loud background. Oh, I don't, okay. So it, like, so it didn't move around or anything. It's just them playing in this weird little, like, world. It was so fucking cool to see, dude. And I ended up fucking jamming around there in my house, dude. And I was like, I haven't been to a job and base event in ages. And I ended up having a kiss from that, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, dude, fuck. I just want a festival. Like, festivals with thousands of people again, dude. Yeah. I agree, dude. Just I'll think miss, about, like, how good, it, how how good it felt too. walking around the festival. Like, you're not thinking about, like, any of your, your stresses. You're, not, you're literally in, like, like... I, I don't know. World outside of I used to not be walking days. around because I used to be trapped as fuck. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? Like, you don't give a fuck. You're just yeah. in this environment. Like, you don't. That feeling is. Yo, that's something I miss a lot. Dude. That's. It is great. And, and I haven't felt like that since before COVID, pretty much. Like, because even, even when you go out somewhere now, like, you're like, ah, oh, fucking curfew, this, mm. that. Like, we've got to worry about X, Y, and Z. Like mm. it's, yeah. and they've proven they'll fuck around with these curfews. That's why I don't fuck the government for that. <laughs> Personally, dude, it's so stupid. <laughs> but yeah, dude, it's so stupid. As far as between like, hours of ten p.m. and four a.m., very dangerous time to catch COVID. Yeah, uh, it's just like cor- like control parameters that they're putting on us. It's crazy to even think about. It. Have you seen what's apparently going on in Australia, dude? Australia is apparently going. Like, what the on. fuck? They're like, ch- like going to China, bro. <laughs> and they have like money going on, dude. And like people are like, uh, some of the shit I read, like I, I need to read into it more to like confirm. But like it's, it's sounding like a fucking police state right now, dude. With dude, the, the way like people can't leave their houses and shit. Like apparently they're going way too hard, dude. And their dude. cases are way lower than other places in the world, dude. Ah, what the fuck, like. Taking people's, you see, like, that's the thing with this whole COVID thing that, like, really scares me is people giving up their freedoms because they're afraid. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, yeah, COVID there, yeah, COVID has killed people, like, 100%, but, like, considering the amount of damage it has done, like, is it worth giving up that amount of your, your freedom? I don't, I don't think so. The thing like, is, like, <laughs> I think it's maybe just because we're from South Africa that we have to deal with the, the last time that at any point something could happen to you. Mm. Like, because yeah, I don't think a lot of us grow up with the, I'm going to live straight to 80 with no problems. I like, think, I think. Like, a, like a, a lot of us see, there's a lot of different realities that take place around us, let's say crime or this or that, that can hit us way before something like that. Yeah, I, I think that definitely has a, uh, has an effect. Like we, we live in a, I mean, we're pretty privileged, but we, we, most of our country, like, is already kind of living on the edge. You like, know? street smart is, like, basic here. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's our basic form of communication. It's not, like, something that someone would go learn on the street. Yeah, exactly. It's some shit. Like, it's like, just like, don't walk down the street if you're fighting your fucking hand. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, like, no, but also just dealing like, with people in different places. Mm. It's very weird, but I think, like, in a lot of the places in the world, it was very, like, very, very existent. Yeah. And they pushed their fears onto us. Like <laughs> because yeah. sadly there's there's people die. People have known people have died throughout the years of many different things. Yeah. Like you can say it's with COVID or this and that, but it's just because it's present that it's hitting people a lot harder or someone mm-hmm. personal to them. Which I understand completely. Mm-hmm. Like a, I, I, I don't agree with that argument. But like, it doesn't yeah. stop conversation. Yeah. Like, e- even like, if somebody close to me died of COVID, um, I still, like, my, my stance on um, allowing people to have a certain degree of choice and freedom doesn't really change. Yeah. Because it's, it's like, to, to what extent do we, do we give up that freedom? To, to what extent, especially with a virus, like, like, it's not like this shit is the plague. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's not killing like 50% of the people in the face. Like, it's, yeah. it's, it's, 
because I think about like how many. Uh, I don't claim to like I, I don't run around and like tell people like this is how, how you should live your life, but mm. like the thing is, if they, I, I feel like I we, agree we, with we, that. We, we take risks it. every day. You yeah. know what I mean? And and to, to give up that amount of your freedom because like like the the medical system is going to be affected or, or this is going to be affected, that's going to be affected, and then all this politicking and bullshit goes on. And it's like, how do I? believe your especially with our government and many other governments yeah. like how do I believe like your expert opinion? Like I'm not an expert, but how do I believe your expert opinion and just trust yeah. you to take my a centralized entity to take my liberties away. Yeah. And and from something that clearly in front of my face, to be honest, over the last however long, has been destructive in a sense. But I don't think destructive enough to constitute the amount of destruction we've brought upon ourselves. The problem, the problem <laughs> is that the locking us up has caused a lot more problems as in money. Yeah, ex- exactly. Health. Like, dude, I, like I, I people know, have been I, heavily I affected by a lot of things that aren't COVID. I can count people that I know yeah. directly and people I know who know other people who have committed suicide because of this. I can't. Yeah, because they're. they're People who, I mean, my, yeah. dude, my mental health, like, I went through a very rough patch, like, um, especially, like, towards sort of mid to end 2020, like, I was in a very fucking dark place. Um, and it's, it's just, I don't know, like, to me, it just seems, like, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, like, I'm not about fucking microchips or new world orders or any of that no. shit. I'm just talking about the practicality well, of, of what of, of, of how this has affected yeah. people versus how maybe they would have been affected if we were more, uh, like, if we were more, if we thought a bit better about how we went about, like, isolating and and, and managing an economy, no, but, as opposed to just blatant people, like, bringing the hammer down and fucking everything. No, but, like, it's like <laughs> saying, wear a mask. But is everyone wearing an N95 mask? Is it the mask that actually protects you, or is it something that gives you like 10 to 15 percent it's, it's Also, like, I'm an anti vaxxer hmm. I'm not anti every vaccine. I'm anti currently this one that exists. I don't like whatever's going on or whatever, like calming juice or whatever might be in there. Or the thing is, I don't trust the way the virus came out. Hmm. I don't trust who dealt with it. I don't trust that the people who dealt with it are the ones that brought it out as well and that are telling us to do these extra things as well. Yeah. As a thing. But also, like, just because I'm an anti vaxxer as well doesn't mean I don't believe in COVID. Yeah. That's also, I think, another and, thing that gets confused and, often. And that's. But also, I've never seen it isolated, but I also don't believe doctors have seen it isolated or majority of doctors. How many doctors have actually seen COVID, or how many of them have a list that says this is something? Hmm. Look, I mean, I I don't understand enough about the virus. That's the thing is, I'm not a doctor. Yeah, like I, <laughs> I, I I don't understand enough of what what what. So the, the core points there, like regardless of whether you're a, a vaxxer or an anti-vaxxer, whether like I'll have a vaccine, hmm. like that's that's my but, that that's my choice, and, and yeah. your choice is yours, and this whole narrative around um, being like like attacking each other over our choices. The thing is, that when it becomes, um, is it is a it, it's a difficult conversation because on one side people are like, well, you know, we want to get back to normal, like you know, we we, we we trust this, we trust the science, like this has been horrible, like people have died, whatever, mm. and like we we we, we just want to move on. You know, and that's why we want everybody to get a vaccine so this shit can end. You know, yeah. Which, which I get, but then in in the same token, you know, from the side of the person who doesn't want to have it, have the vaccine, you know, maybe your opinion is like the vaccine was developed very very quickly, and you yeah. know, some people have had some fairly rough side effects from it. You know, most people yeah. have been fine, but some of that rough side effects, and, and I'm, 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 I'm just people, not comfortable yeah. taking it. And then I think the problem is, is what happens is like like additional narratives like get built on top of like whatever per- someone's stance is or assumed stance is. Yeah. And and it's like, oh, you're a fucking conspiracy theorist, anti vaxxer, like no, where's the chip? <laughs> where, where's the where's the I, But chip? I have looked into that yeah. because I I don't trust people yeah. to that extent. Like I I, I like <laughs> weirdly enough. I, 
I just, but I don't believe it's gonna happen. I, I just think that there's like this like extreme attacking each other without listening. The thing is, um, and and there's definitely people on like both sides of the extreme. Yeah. And I, for me personally, like I'm gonna get a vaccine. Like I want to travel and shit. Like if like if it fucks me, it fucks me. Like. Yeah, it, it, it is what it is, and like I, I get it. I know a lot of people who have had it, and and they're generally fine. Yeah. Um, and if if I can travel and like go and live my life and like chase my dreams, then then cool. Um, you know, if if we've been fucked up by like some fucking giant medical mistake or mm. cash grab or whatever, the problem you know that that that's a fuck up. It it, it, it is, but it's um the problems I have with it is this belief that the vaccine is the problem solver. And the narrative that it's been pushed forward as a problem solver, as in if you take this vaccine, you're free. Yeah. But now they're also saying yeah. that there's new strains coming out. And that's a good that, point. And now you've got to take yeah. one every six months. That's a different conversation. Yeah. It's not taking one vaccine, this is now four. Yeah, exactly. And, and, From three. And, and, like, and being deterministic about, and about the all of this. With what exactly is in it? Yeah. And what, like, I'm also, like, I'm, I'm not afraid of needles. I've had to have needles before. I had to clear blood because I had a blood condition in the brain. Like, so, needles aren't my problem either. I don't mind them. Yeah. But, how many times do you have to get an injection before you stop worrying what's in there? Or what if there's something inside there that affects your um, nutrition levels or your risk factors and you start ending up deprived on something? Like, it's not far-fetched to believe that we are unaware of certain side effects like that that could affect dopamine output, anything like that. There's, there's so many things that could be involved in that, but also as a side argument, is where is the conversation of the obesity is a problem, diabetes is a problem. Mm. Yeah, like there's certain conditions that are pro- problematic that are causing a lot more. So where is the let's, where like let's people, tell you the people food, are dying more food, like a better diet. Health is. What is what about vitamin C and zinc? What about that ivermectin shit or that hydroxychloroquine or why aren't these options? And also, besides all of that, is natural immunity. Mm-hmm. Which is, if you've dealt with the virus already, so let's say you've had COVID, your body's already dealt with COVID and fought it and survived. Your mm-hmm. antibodies are way stronger than someone who's only had a directed dose of a vaccine. Because they, they're well, still I mean, developing it. these things when your body <laughs> did a full on attack and fought back and kicked it out. So, mm-hmm. Are you not more immune than someone with a vaccine then, as with that? Like, and like, well, I, I, the I problem is amongst all of this like is research, I'm not a doctor. Right? That's the yeah. thing, I'm not a doctor, so I can only speculate from my side mm. as a human and be like, I don't know. But yeah. my, my biggest problem above all of it is when did the cops decide it's okay to enforce these laws? Well, I mean, like, I- like, when did a cop say, okay, 10 o'clock, I will arrest you? At under, if you do not have your vaccine now inside said shop, we can arrest you. Yeah. Well, at what point are these allowed, or at what point can you no longer protest now because it's a COVID problem? Yeah. Or at what point, like, there's certain things that are being... There's, like, the key issues and like liberties at stake here yeah. yeah. and, and I, I, I agree with I agree with that completely and it, it, it is something um it is something people don't want to talk about and, and I, I feel like we, we 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 don't talk about like the subtleties mm. in in the discussion. It's like you're either this or you're that. The thing is that when everything has to be fact based, I think like, like, the, like the, the, like the subtle can... issues with, within like these things, like what's going on in yeah. Australia, it's like one thing leads to the next. People are like, oh, you no, know, we want everybody to be safe. Everybody has the greatest intentions, yeah. but they haven't necessarily really thought it through. The problem you know? is, <laughs> is, like, let's say I give you an essay and I'll say summarize this essay. That's a fact sheet. Yeah. You only have 30 seconds to speak. Yeah. You're saying that summarized thing, you're not adding in shit. Yeah, exactly. It's it's like, like completely it's, simplified like it's just yeah. giving random shit to people. But yeah. also like amongst all of this there's another conversation and this is the one that will probably rip me. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's people's sensitivity to this. Yeah. As in oh I know someone who's died of COVID or yeah. this and that and we can't talk about this or there's also people who are now let's say fronting the vaccine without knowing what it is. 
mm. and getting a little shot and then posting it on Instagram. Mm. Like, okay, there's one argument for you creating that to the awareness. Mm. Okay, people that like that, go for it. <laughs> but for the other people, is you just normalizing like complacent behavior. Yeah. And making it cool. Yeah. Which like, and, uh, they're like, and, it's, and it's for people who aren't willing to stand up for themselves or know that, they might be like, oh, I'm going to go, maybe I'll get 20 likes. I'll go get a vaccine. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, people who yeah. thought about it before, that's but that, that, that the vaccine, complacency. but yeah. is the vaccine 100% guaranteed to free you after you take it? That's the question amongst all of us. Is after you take your three shots, are you free? Do you have to wear a mask? Do you get to drive around with masks? When, when, when are they changing those laws? Because there's a large amount of the population vaccinated and no one's changing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think the, the argument um, at, at the moment from the, the, the government side is like the cases are still, are still high, you know. In, in a lot of parts of the first world, people are generally back to normal. Like the UK is still back to normal. They still haven't really, they haven't gone back to restrictions as far as I'm aware. I know in other parts of the world, um, it, it, they have had to go back to, or have had to go back to restrictions. Um, but uh, I, I guess you know the honest thing is, is like we can't like truly know. Like you're, you're just one man on the ground. Like, yeah. <laughs> how do how do you know? That's and, the thing is that why, like, what is our access to information from the ground? Like, we only see what the fake news is telling us. Obviously, that's a fucking shit, bro. I mean, <laughs> it's, it, it, it's such a critical... I, I try not to be too deterministic, but I do... I, from my side, like, I do agree with this, the discussion about how much liberty are we giving up? Yeah. How complacent are we being with certain things? How, how, how you know... Snitching. How, 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 aware of, <laughs> how aware are we remaining mm. of... And, and it's not a new thing in society, a government taking control. I mean, look at what's fucking happening in China, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like, the thing is, people like will people pretend, are getting social scores. Like, no, what the fuck? People will pretend things like Hitler yeah. and Stalin and Mao and things don't exist anymore, but they're like, just dude, playing different games. Exactly. And, 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 and that discussion, Someone believed in those people that discussion well. I think, 100% needs to be had. Being too deterministic or too, um, or assuming too much. Um, oh, you're, 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 you're no better than, than the fucking, than the vaccine, uh, whatever, vaccine activist, whatever, whatever you want to call them. Yeah. Um, I think on both sides, you're emotionally attached to, to something. Mm. Um, and it, it more needs to be down to like, the thing is, trying to have a more practical discussion the, around like the problem is, is the vaccine is a great example because it's one of the catalysts. As in, if fifty-one percent of the population takes vaccine, it's going to occur. Mm. Like if if enough of the population takes that vaccine, they're they really. I'm not saying they're the agreeable kind, but, but they uh, they agree with what's happening. A lot of them. Well, so let's let's say more like yeah. sixty or seventy percent is a better number once once we get to that number because I'm sure some people with the vaccine also don't agree with what they're yeah. they've just chosen to I, 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 th- I think the vaccine, their the, the vaccine itself does doesn't necessarily like need to be isolated or, or attached to that draconian um sort of issue or or, or as a force to like, mandate. Yeah I I, I yeah. think I think it, it can become um It can become um, a, a difficult issue when you've got like a centralized entity like the government um, no, enforcing, in, enforcing, enforcing legislation, it. enforcing mm. like almost pretty much permanent legislation um, around certain things like that because we, 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 know, we know that governments and centralized entities like that will take advantage. The thing but, is, but all it, governments but, would want a, uh, a world that runs nicely in a way so whatever yeah. their idea of that is they will try and inform yeah but but in in the same token it could be maybe the discussion that could be had is you know maybe it can be down to private entities if they feel that it's a risk for them and their business mm. then they can choose what they want to enforce the, the problem and if if yeah. it's if, if it's uh but but i i, I 
don't feel very comfortable. The, po- the problem with that, the government as a centralized entity, which I really don't fucking trust. No, the, the, um, like the that basic example of that is how, how something like that would work. Say you're an employee now at a workshop, yeah. and you have a manager, foreman, yeah. whatever is going on there. And then above that, you have whoever's the head of that office or place of yeah. But then above that, you have corporate who work for a big brand. Yeah. And how well does that work as an example of enforcing this? Because this guy on this level that's working inside, let's say, the dealership, mm. is saying, oh, no, it's corporate fucking. Mm. Corporate says, no, the dealership can do it. Mm. The employee is sitting there, fuck. Like, <laughs> So even amongst that level, like, if you disagree with something, I don't think you should lose your job. Yeah. And the thing is, there should be enough trust in this vaccine to solve the virus that that person without it can come there. Like, I understand there's mutations and things, but I don't know why no other diseases have had this many mutations. Like, yeah. AIDS is a virus. There's, well, it, it has, other viruses. It has, why HIV it, has mutated a lot. But no, why is it so public now? Why? Well, like, well, that, that's the, that, that's like the thing as well. And, and, and I, I get what you're saying. The world I all the time. Get what why you're is saying. this so public? And the, like, the, the, the one thing, you know, like I, I have people telling me about hospitals are bursting at the seams. It's a fuck up. Like, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm like, like, why hasn't that been explicitly covered? The problem is, I, 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 I'm not saying I have a belief about anything. Like I'm, I'm removing myself from like having like a, a specified opinion. I'm just asking. Just navigating this, the conversation. I, I'm, I'm just You're asking just the question. Yeah. How, how extensively has it been covered? I really haven't seen a lot of coverage about it. Like I really haven't. I, why hasn't the media been able to go and see what's going on in the hospital? Do you know what I mean? The problem and, is, and, and the other thing is, is like we're directing all these resources to like certain things, but like. If, if this is such an issue, why haven't we directed resources to expanding, temporarily expanding healthcare facilities and things like that? Why have we stifled um, so many other resource producing things over that one specific thing, which we barely actually poured that much resource into? Mm. Especially in South Africa, where there's been like intense fucking corruption and shit around them. It's yeah. Like, it's like, I, I could get the narrative, like, if you could show me the destruction. Like if you can show me, like, fuck, like this, the, like this is what's going on. The, 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 this is how bad it is. But I, I've been living my life. Like I've been going around. I've been seeing people. I've been doing things. Yeah. Like, I, I, I've been communicating with people all over the world. Like I, we have friends that live all over, all over the place. And very seldomly have we come across like a point where like COVID has been intensely. Intensely devastating. I know. I know people who have died. More just very. I, I, I know people, well, people who, who have had family that. members who have died, etc. But for the most part, most of those people had prior issues. No, but um, also like, or, or, or I really, it's example, like, it's like, like I understand that it's destructive, and and it can be yeah. destructive for somebody like in their immediate circle, and it can be very devastating for somebody. But hmm. why, like, like it, it, it clearly has not been devastating to the extent. Of, of something like you know, you know something that's really like fucking Whoa. killing people and like ruining their fucking lives. Well, like, the, the devastating part is currently that we felt the most of is driving. So yeah. which I was understand that was partly by, by Zuma. Lockdowns and I understand it was partly Zuma, but I also yeah. believe it was partly lockdown. And yeah, people, the, people are poor as fuck. People like, broke like the, there's people that are broke as fuck in this country. Like even one of Tristan's arguments is shouldn't we have try to do some housing projects or something like that to try help people end up in cleaner environments than the ones they live in. Well, if you, like, that, because uh, that, that's part of the argument as well, is that why are you living, letting people live in shit environments when we have this government funding to do all of this shit, but you can't take someone out of poverty to live in, in not do and, 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 and be healthy towards the population. And, and, like, and, so what, what are you expecting of people and what are you giving to people? Exactly, but from from like governments that have already been like screwing people over, driving bullshit narratives, like manipulating people, etc., etc. Like why now? 
must I now listen to what you're saying to me word for word and trust what you're saying to me After and, and just follow all, no. these, all these regulations and shit that you're, that you're putting into place when you've already fucked me over multiple times before we even got you. So no. how can I trust the thing is, we become, how, how can I trust you? And, and, and I understand we become desensitized. That, I understand that discussion about like how much of my freedom am I giving up? How much do I really know? Et cetera, et cetera. But what I don't subscribe to is people being deterministic about like fucking microchips and all sorts of bullshit that they have no evidence to support. Yeah. So that 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 I understand. But we do need to come we, the, the, the discussion around our liberties, our freedoms, our freedom to do what we want with our bodies. Should be an open um, and, discussion. And, 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 and the quality of information to. that we're being fed. I agree with that. Um, well. we need better I, information. I, I, I don't feel comfortable with those uh, various factors at the moment. Yeah, I can agree with that. I, I, I don't necessarily know how to nav- navigate it. I'm not being deterministic. Um, but it is something that I, that, that I think about. Yeah. Completely. The thing is, like, on ground level, what can we do about it? <laughs> I don't know. That's, it, it, yeah. it's, it's quite a, it's, it's a weird feeling because you, you are like, I, I don't feel comfortable with, with all of this, like, this vaccine passport shit and, like, I don't like it. You know, like, <laughs> oh, oh, now you need to have another third booster shot of this thing and, like, oh, it's, like, not working and things like that. But, I, again, I don't, I don't have enough access to broad enough information to sit and analyze and be like, okay, the vaccine yeah. is working. The vaccine isn't working because like these people are driving narrative that it isn't these people are driving narrative that it is i'm not there i can't be able to the like, so, so so i have no fucking yeah. idea really what what is going on but what i do know is in my immediate circles this virus has not been devastating as a virus it's been devastating because of, of the people who have forced us into lockdowns and destroyed our businesses and destroyed and mental health. It destroyed our mental health. Yeah. Because that's it's, also a huge factor. People yeah. that don't believe in themselves anymore might get more heavily affected by something. Yeah, it, it, exactly. Like your body is broken, so it, it, so it's not fighting the same way it should. Your mental yeah. health is very important. And, and yeah. I, I just like, I, I mean, I've, I've been to hospitals a few times during this time, and I wouldn't say that. I don't know, maybe they got it like all in like a separate ward, but I'm just like, if this is such a devastating issue, like why is it not being shown to us? The problem is also like, where, like where, 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 where is all of this fucking devastation? Like it, with the, yeah. the devastation I see in front of me is like, like everything economically fucking crumbling, shit getting more expensive, people yeah. getting frustrated. Like yeah. I just see the devastation that the lockdowns caused. I haven't seen any devastation, or at least not devastation, anywhere near the devastation that's been created by the lockdowns um, from, from the virus. And I, and and, and yeah. what supports that argument even more being in South Africa is people don't really adhere to regulations very well here anyway. Yeah. And we're still kind of like <laughs> getting on with it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And what's really, yeah. what's fucked us? Lockdowns. Like yeah. that's what's fucked South Africans. We yeah. haven't been fucked by a virus. People are struggling <laughs> to pay their bills. And people can't pay their bills. Together, yeah. Everything's getting more expensive. People are looting and rioting. Like, uh, I, like I, I, I know this narrative's being driven, but what I see in front of my face just doesn't make sense. <laughs> to me, it looks like government's playing divide and conquer. Exactly. And because I'm not... <laughs> how, at the same time, is there so much other issues involved as distracting? <laughs> Not distractors, like there is some real issues, but there's so many other issues involved that, 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 that suddenly they throw the race card in between this and stuff like that. How can news channels do that? I, I don't know. I, I haven't been, I like, haven't seen such things, just, so I, I'm, I'm not. Yeah, it's, it's confusing. I have an like, opinion on, on that side of it. Yeah, no, but I'm just saying, like, let's say this now, this, this riot, it's suddenly this, or this is suddenly that because that's currently the narrative that's in the air. Yeah. How long are you still chilling for, bro? Um, I do it's like 10 past 12. Oh, shit. So you're going to get to Well, I'll, I'll check. Uh, we can cut it down. We'll do it another day as well. Yeah. Unless you have more to say. Yeah, I, I, I just... Um, I agree with the whole complacency argument. Um, and I agree with... Um, you know, having that discussion about giving up our liberties. Mm. Um... But it's difficult to be too deterministic because we actually there's so much information like 
or trying to filter and understand what's going on. Like really, like whatever narrative you would want to subscribe to, you really could find some kind of information, something to help you support that. Yeah, narrative. anyone, yeah. Uh, it, whatever it may be. Yeah. Um, and uh, I. What, what, what I do know is just like the practical discussion around like what, what I've experienced as an individual um, and and what a lot of people around me have experienced. Uh, yeah, it's I, different to the narrative they put like that. It's a little yeah, bit exaggerated. I, I, I just can't, yeah. I, I can't, I can't trust, <laughs> I, I can't trust the, the government like telling me that all of this is for my own good. Yeah. Like vaccine discussion aside. Vaccine discussion aside. Yeah. Like no, I'm not even talking about the vaccine. I'm I'm talking about like you taking away my freedoms and me just having to be complacent with that. Based on this thing you've told me is like super deadly and dangerous to, to, to yeah. me and the people around me. But I've experienced basically no destruction, like real destruction. And the, and, 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 and the people just, that I have seen yeah. experience destruction like like those people were really going through. But the thing is, some families, their destruction could be cancer runs in their family. Yeah. They could be, all be kind of broke. So, crime yeah, is exactly. a big problem. They could be, like each family has their own sorts of things. It's just, it's, it, it, I just feel like it's not threatening enough to us as human beings mm. to constitute the amount of freedom that, that, we, have, that we have given up. It's yeah. not. It, it, it's, it's not. Like we, we, we have been through, we have been through far worse things. And I think, um, People need to have the choice. Yeah. You know. Yes. Y- y- yes. Yes. There may be destruction and yeah. whatnot, but like, it's it's a difficult dis- discussion between like we're saving lives or protecting people, and we're taking away their freedoms um, mm. and, and 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 ability to to live their lives. It's yeah, the part, and, and I, I the can't, I just is, can't how, much, how much are we <laughs> losing along the way yeah. to gain this life that they say we do? Yeah, exactly. It's like, like it's like a, when did they become the ones that determine that? Exactly. Yeah. That that's something that I don't like. No, I don't know. Just on my level, I just do my thing. And I say I'm not taking part in this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll sit there. I'll look at the information. Maybe one day I'll take the vaccine. Maybe I'll do this. But at the moment, what I see is similar to you. Mm-hmm. I'm seeing a lot of of taking advantage and being forced to do things they don't want to do. Mm. Like, on the aspect of doctors, cops, mm. politicians, all of this, like all of them as well are being forced into situations by someone, or something as well. So it's, it's a confusing situation where there's people in these places that you can direct blame at, but it's not everyone inside there. There's still good people inside there. If anything, those are the people that could help us in, in this current system that we live in. <laughs> yeah. Because they are the ones that are inside and fighting. So it's confusing. Yeah, I do. Like, it's very confusing. So there is a, it's just weird because there is no actual side or place to take on this. Thing. Like you said, there's so many different narratives. Where, do you, where does one stand? Or is the job just to get us confused as fuck? <laughs> yeah. that's a win so far, dude. <laughs> that's how that that's how I feel. I'm I'm confused. Like this vaccine thing, everybody appears to be fine. You know, you never know. Maybe maybe we'll get a few years down the line, and there'll be all sorts of shit that's happening, and, and whatever. And, and nobody knows. Yeah. But I, I, I'm not I'm not being deterministic about it, dude. But yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't fucking know. But what I do know is I don't like. How my freedom has been taken from me for such a long time. Yeah. Over something that I haven't see, haven't seen. Nearly two years. It, it, it hasn't been destructive enough. It yeah. hasn't. Yeah. Like like we 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 cannot we cannot be this afraid. Yeah. We can't. It's it's it just make especially sense, yeah. as a young person and like I've noticed and um, especially with like generally with older people. Is like I think it's easier for them to be complacent because like you had your young years, like you fucking travelled, like you've done things, you've done what you want to do. Mm. But for us as young people, like it's bullshit. Yeah. Like we, we we okay, cool, we must just give but, up but we, also we're giving of our up lives. our entire freedom because of the situation that exists of this vaccine thing, where the vaccine doesn't actually solve the problem, it just makes you slightly more protected. Yeah. So those older people that were 
in fear or still in fear after this. Yeah, exactly. So, and the younger people are like, even children and things are hardly even a bracket. Some have died, it's horrible to say. And no, but very few. But very few. Very few. Like, so, so it's not a, one of those brackets where it's threat. Yeah. Even exactly. how it's only, I think only up from 40 and up, and then if you have any underlying condition. And even still. So then that's the thing is, if it's not a threat to you, and you could probably take it right now, is there not a room I can go into, get some COVID, and either walk away in a week and a half or not, and then get a certificate of natural immunity? Like, is that not an option? Yeah. Like, because if I can walk away from it, yeah, because, because like, who's to say the vaccine is more, and I guess we would need to look, I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's some data about this, there must be some. A lot of it it's being hidden because it, it, it's like, it brings it, up it, vaccine like, and the natural immunity yeah. from having it before versus a vaccination, and like, yeah. is the vaccination more effective, or is the vaccination more effective after you've had it and you've had a vaccination? Maybe then it's, is it more effective then? You know, are we just gonna like? There's random studies yeah. coming in now, at least, that are being done, and uh, well, if the information doesn't really it's it's like sure. we we've almost got to act yeah. too fast to be able to look at the data, and mm. and that that I can understand I can understand how that would scare people. Mm. It's like we we we're rolling it out before we even like had a chance to kind of like like Let's check get, the situation. Yeah, it's like responding on emotion. Yeah, to anything. <laughs> and and all of us yeah. like non-scientists are in the dark and like. You know, pe- people who don't know how it all works. You know, you're just I, trying to filter I, I, all this information. Yeah, you know, you're, you're trying to understand. You're like, wow, it's like all happening really quickly, and like my freedoms have been taken from me, and like, and I, I can understand how people are like, <laughs> they're not you know, happy with this. <laughs> I, 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 really I get scary, it. Yeah. I get it. Like, look, I've I've probably put some dodgy things in my body at, at times, so I'll I'll get a vaccine so I can fucking travel and get on with my life. Yeah. But um, I, 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 I don't hate you if you don't. But, want but to your <laughs> argument, like, your argument above this is more above the the vaccine being like a catalyst mm-hmm. to the rest of these things that are happening. Mm-hmm. You're not really anti-vaccine at all. No, I, I'm not like, anti-vaccine, and like, I, I'm not saying that the anti situation. I, I don't like, think the vaccine is the catalyst. I don't. Yeah. I think the no, catalyst, I, I think the catalyst has, is already, it's happened. Like, no, but I think it's a catalyst down, of like a, the, the entire conversation in one little snippet that people try and avoid that conversation now. Yeah. And everything gets grouped into that. Yeah, no, for sure. And Because uh, you might be grouped into anti vaccine Yeah, ex- so there's exactly. No, there's like, nothing like, like this. this like that. That, anything yeah. in this discussion. Like but if, I'm an if, if, you, if you took <laughs> certain sections of it out of context, yeah. maybe you would think it I'm an anti vaxxer. It will look rough. Exactly. <laughs> but that's that's the thing. But it's it's the same yeah. concept that we're talking about. If yeah. you think about it, it's, it's like a simplified narrative based on like a few words that have come out of somebody's mouth. But like, how deep are we? Did you actually pay attention to whatever it is we're paying attention to? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And how deep can anyone pay when there's so and, much and again, like happen. maybe there's like virologists and scientists who are like these guys are fucking like just like you're idiots. Like we know exactly how this works because we're scientists, you know. And like yeah. we're just too stupid to understand. Like or or or, or, or somebody that well, you're not stupid, but like like you just you might just be missing that. Yeah, door. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you just you can't <laughs> comprehend it. It's yeah. like you haven't learned. But they know, <laughs> yeah. you know, and it's like, but I, I can understand but somebody also, being like, I just got to try, like, look, I've seen doctors that didn't do a good job on the thing they needed to do for me. I do not you believe know what I mean? in either, <laughs> so I do I do not believe in either Yeah, hundred percent. Like, that is a it. job role, not an individual. Yeah. Like those people are still very different. Yeah, right? but it's 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 yeah. a discussion we need to remove our emotions from and just practically talk about. Like, it's, yeah. I, I, I get it. I totally understand everybody having different opinions, and I totally understand concerns from various different sides. I think there's extremes on every side, but we need to stop being so fucking emotional. Coy. Also, <laughs> coy. Like, we don't want to talk about that. It's yeah. A little or, 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 or avoiding it because yeah. we, we don't want it to lead to 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 that emotional reaction. Like, we yeah. on, on both ends, we need to, as a society or as human beings, get to a point where we can have a more practical discussion without trying to fucking kill each other. Yeah. And also to try and stop subscribing to serious deterministic extremes um, and more try and just look at what's in front of us. Yeah. You know? No, I agree. When you... I think people should also directly assess their reality. 
yeah. from the way you do it <laughs> as it is and what we record and also look at people around you, see what they experience. Yeah. Because poverty is currently the biggest thing I'm seeing right now. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a heavy contributor to COVID as well, so I'm going to solve that and solve that. <laughs> yeah. Because exactly. if people are living in environments that aren't friendly <laughs> to sanitary conditions, <laughs> yeah. because the fucking situation that yeah. you end up it's living in like failed, totally counterproductive. <laughs> that's counterproductive. <laughs> <laughs> Completely. But that's the thing. And that's, like, a, that's a subtlety that we, nobody's talking about. Yeah. Like, or, or some people are talking about like it. Tristan some, brought this up to yeah. me and I was like, fuck, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't think about that one. But that's a weird thing. There's a weird back door. Exactly. Dude. But all in all, but you need to get going, dude. Yeah, I probably should. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Before you get stuck here, dude. But I'll wait. Thank you very much.